You are listening to Great Zimbabwe University Campus Radio, the varsity voice of choice. And my name is Tavita Natasha Mbala. And welcome to this special program where we are joined in the studio by the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Honorable Professor Mtulin Nube. Professor, a very good evening and a warm welcome to Great Zimbabwe University Campus Radio. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Today. And we're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Professor, you've been traveling around the country with the objective of evaluating the road network in the country and in the view of the fact that such a network represents arteries that make business tick. What is your assessment of the progress made so far with reference of the Bait Bridge, Harare and Churundu Highway? I'm very pleased with the progress that I've seen there today. As I told uh, the road, we've got six contractors. Each of them have been given... Uh, you know, uh, uh, 20 kilometers to, to, to sort out, to, to revamp. And uh, I think that they're doing a good job indeed. They're all, they're at different stages of, uh, of, of progress, but it's, it's progress none, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And it's quite clear that they are using local material and also employing local, these are local companies, and that is really most welcome. It means that all the e wealth, the revenues and process are going into the economy. Mm -hmm. They're also, you know, employing local uh, locals in terms of local communities along the road. Wow. I've always maintained that, you know, a road is an economy. So it's very important that if a road is passing through a portion of Masingo to the, in that 20-kilometer stretch, the villagers, if there are any along that road, should benefit. Mm -hmm. If there are a few youngsters, they will need jobs, they should be given jobs almost by default. And that's very important so that the road has an impact on the communities through which it, 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 it passes. A road is an economy, is very important. But the other thing is that the roads obviously lower the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. It's a way to, to, to connect, it's a way for, for improving con connectivity right across the, 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 the economy. So the better the roads, uh, uh, the better. Our roads have taken a while to be revamped, but, but they, they are being revamped now, especially this, this important road. You know, this is a road that carries traffic literally from South Africa all the way through uh, large major cities, whether Masingo, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Gweru, Harare, and other diversions, all the way into Zambia and DRC. So it's a major road, and it's very important for it to be revamped, and I'm very pleased with the progress that, that I've seen. Okay, that's very good. Professor Mtuling Nubej, I said, is very pleased with the progress that is going on on the Bait Bridge, um, Masingo, Harare, Churundu Highway. Professor, just yesterday, the government announced a 50% salary increment for civil servants and a U.S. dollar COVID-19 cushion allowance. Can you please unpack what this development means to the workers and Zimbabweans in general? Oh, you know, we, we as government, we want to always want to make sure that our uh, employees, the civil servants, are well protected against inflation. Uh, you know, inflation has been uh, uh, rising. And we've been concerned that this is eroding the purchasing power of their, their salaries. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for us to, to give that 50% salary increase while we also think of a much more comprehensive approach to supporting them in terms of the, the take-home pay. We did something extra as well, which is now to provide uh, what we're calling an inflation, an inflation protector. That's mm -hmm. what that $75 US dollar means. Now, the modalities for, for that are that uh, it will be paid into a foreign currency account, into an FCA account. So each civil servant ought to open an FCA account with a bank. We will pay to that as government. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be issued with a card by the bank. Then they can use that card for purchasing any goods and services and, and, and paying for, for, for those. We want to make sure that uh, we minimize the amount of cash coming out of that uh, payment mm. because the moment there's cash, U.S. Yeah, dollars, yeah, they yeah. might find their way into the parallel market. Yeah, so yeah. we as government cannot be party to a process that uh, <laughs> makes things worse uh, for the parallel market. So, mm. so the, the use of a card is a good thing. So you can imagine if you go and swipe uh, uh, you know, at, at a shop and you're, you're buying in U.S. dollars, clearly the inflation rate that confronts you as you buy is far different from the inflation rate that confronts someone who's, who's buying in, in Zimbabwe dollars. And that's the impact we want. Mm -hmm. By by you know uh, giving out the ten five dollar uh, you know uh, payment, uh, and it's tax free by the way. Oh, For wow. pensioners, it's thirty dollars. Also, we've taken care of pensioners as well, mm -hmm. and again, it, it it is tax free. Oh, that's very interesting. And um, in a more related matter, recently the RBZ introduced new notes to ease money supply on the market. How has this impacted the payment system in the country? F first of all, w w why did the RBZ 
or the government through RBZ, you know, introduce new new notes. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need a domestic currency as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always had a domestic currency. Even during the time when uh, uh, there was the multi-currency regime, there was a domestic currency in the form of the RTGS electronic uh, money system. The, of course, the exchange rate then was one to one, so it was as good as US dollar. But now the exchange rate is something else. It is, you know, as you saw the announcement from RBZ that from now on it's going to be determined by market forces, uh, matching demand and supply through through the, the, the auction system. So we need a domestic currency in order to have proper a properly functioning economy and so that we can manage the macroeconomics of, 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 of policy making. Now now the in terms of the notes, we needed new notes uh, with a two dollar, five dollar, and then a ten dollar and a twenty dollar. Yes. But the way it is being introduced we're doing it responsibly. It's mm -hmm. not just a wanton, you know, throwing of 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 of, of the money and, and, and wanton printing of the money. No, no, no. It's very responsible. Basically, we are swapping uh, RTGS, which is the electronic dollar, for the physical cash. The reason is that we want to control the size of money uh, supply at any point in time. We want to manage that money supply growth to make sure that money supply then doesn't grow too much and then cause more inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important to, to manage that uh, uh, through the, uh, that swapping uh, mechanism. At the same time, we've also allowed citizens to use their free funds in terms of uh, uh, hard uh, uh, currency free funds. Again, that's a mechanism, obviously, to see them, to introduce flexibility during this COVID uh, 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 period. But also, it's to also to manage money supply because these US dollars are almost already in circulation and we're saying use them mm -hmm. so we don't have to print additional Zim dollars, you already have some money to use in the first place in the shops. Mm -hmm. So it's also a mechanism to manage money supply so that we can carefully manage the entire transition process and reform process for our monetary system. Okay. You had it here on Great Zimbabwe University Campus Radio. Professor Mtiling Nube spoke about how the introduction of um, the, the, the new notes are being made so that they maintain and, 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 and also avoid um, the issue of inflation in our economy. Um, Professor Mtudinube, uh, your ministry has been in the forefront supporting universities through financing some initiatives to combat the effect of COVID-19 and innovation hubs in tertiary institutions. To what extent have universities taken up the challenge to promote economic development? The new strategy by government for higher education is really what we call Education 5.0. Mm -hmm. And that strategy means that universities must recognize uh, uh, the need to create what we would call an education ecosystem. It starts with teaching theory at undergraduate, eventually postgraduate, a PhD, it wouldn't necessarily be PhD, but you get to some stage where research takes place. And that research, if it's scientific, is likely to produce, it ought to produce some new knowledge. That new knowledge should then be incubated uh, in an innovation hub. And then through that uh, process, again, it can be financed. Uh, uh, once it's financed, then it can be fully commercialized. Then eventually you, you, you end up producing the good commercial, commercially. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that universities ought to realize that they can produce goods and services. They can generate knowledge or impart knowledge that will result in the production of goods and services. It's good for the economy. It's good for innovation. But it's also good for income generation for the university itself. So it's a win-win for everyone who cares about the higher education system and, and what it ought to do. So I'm very pleased that the universities have taken this uh, on and every university is, is doing something about it. Uh, I've actually come to learn mm -hmm. that Great Zimbabwe University is at the forefront of, 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 of this uh, in a new uh, approach or new strategy. Mm -hmm. You're already producing uh, uh, face masks, you're producing sun sanitizers, you're producing other clothing for the security sector. And that's productivity. You're turning knowledge into productivity, but also you're generating income. And that is what we're looking, we're looking for. We would like to see universities become the source of new industries. Mm -hmm. Think of your competitors abroad. Uh, if you look at, for instance, uh, 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 I have to start with my alma mater, mm -hmm. uh, old alma mater rather abroad, which is the University of Cambridge in the UK. It's got a thriving uh, uh, science park, which is you know, producing uh, quite a lot, a lot of... Uh, uh, of industries, especially in the IT sector, fit across all biotech, all over the place. We want the same for Great Zimbabwe University. It can do that. We know it. Mm -hmm. There are enough brains mm -hmm. here. You, you look at uh, Stanford. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Silicon Valley 
really is a product of Stanford. Mm -hmm. If you look at Stanford, you look at Caltech, you look at uh, 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 UC Berkeley as well. In the East Coast of the US, you've got uh, uh, that MIT, uh, Harvard, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a partnership. So, so I'm, I'm just highlighting those investors which have shown that they can be sources of industry. There's no reason why Great Zimbabwe University can, 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 cannot, can, cannot get there. It mm -hmm. will and it ought to get there. This applies to all the other you know, universities. So we as a government are supporting this idea that universities can produce goods and services through innovation and also uh, be able to promote uh, innovation in the first place. Uh, I wanted to obviously go and see your innovation hub, but uh, there isn't enough time uh, to mm -hmm. see how we can continue to support that. The last thing that we've done as a government, uh, uh, one thing we've done is to create a national venture fund. The venture fund is designed to support new ideas coming mm -hmm. out, out of universities. So I would like to be able to one day to invest in, a, in, a, in an innovative idea that results in an innovative product from Great Zimbabwe University uh, and let, let this product thrive, let it be commercially available, let it be an innovation that changes our lives. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, the, my final question for you today is, in this economic environment that Zimbabwe and the rest of the world finds themselves in, what advice do you have for survival, first at household level, then in the business level? Well, well for a start, I think there is a, a, a role for the government for a start. We as government have said that, look, during this COVID moment, we ought to save lives, we also ought to save livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Saving lives means that we ought to encourage our citizens uh, to make sure that they practice uh, prevention measures. So prevention is very critical. So social distancing, uh, the wearing of, of masks, mm -hmm. cleanliness, uh, use of sanitizers, you know, uh, complying with uh, the rules that the police and the government have laid uh, uh, down to say, look, you can't come into the city, you ought to show a cause why you need to travel, where's your letter, where's your permission, all of that is designed to enhance our prevention measures so that we don't contract the disease. Prevention is the single most important thing in dealing with the, the pandemic because why? We have no cure. Mm. We, 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 we just got no, no cure. It's as simple as that. Then secondly, uh, uh, citizens as well, especially those who come from abroad, should not be running away and absconding from you know, detention centers yeah. uh, because if they're positive, then they infect others. They're danger to themselves and others. So again, they ought to comply with those rules. And, and we're saying that uh, if the relatives are aware that so, some of their relatives <laughs> are, are absconding, they ought to report them so that they go back and, and they're properly taken care of by, by, the, by the Minister of, of, of Health. Mm -hmm. Also, as government, we, we are going to be, in fact, we've started already, uh, uh, paying out cash for, for those that we think are vulnerable. So any, if anyone thinks they're vulnerable, economically, they should approach their nearest uh, social welfare office and register. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and upon registering, uh, up to this month, we're paying about uh, $180 per person. Next month from July, we're going to increase that to $300 per person. Mm -hmm. So far, we've, uh, we're paying just over 200,000 people. Our target has been 1 million, but we're not getting enough people coming forward to register. Oh. So encouraging people to come forward and register. Okay. We have a target and a budget for, 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 for 1 million. And then for, for, uh, for yourselves, uh, keep working, keep working hard uh, uh, to earn a living, uh, but obviously do it within the law. I know that those who are working in the formal sector have been encouraged to, to formalize and register, to make mm -hmm. sure their businesses are registered. That's the only way they can get into business. So please register, uh, uh, those out there who are listening, and make sure you can get back uh, to business and start working again for your families and, and so forth. But, but we as government stand ready to support all our citizens to get through this very difficult period uh, 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 during the COVID. You know, we have a stimulus package of $18 billion that we have spread around. The mining sector, uh, for example, is going to get a, about a $1 billion. Mm -hmm. The agricultural sector, this, the, the winter wheat program is, 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 is about $3 billion. If you look at the, the summer program that's coming through in terms of uh, what we call the presidential input sc scheme, uh, uh, that's another $3 billion together uh, six is about six point one billion dollars. That was just for agriculture alone, mm -hmm. you know. And then for 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 uh, the in industrial sector, uh, it's about two and a half billion dollars in the form of guarantees for SMEs, the small and medium scale enterprises. It's another uh, 500, uh, 500 million. So I, I could go on. So in total, we've got about about uh, eighteen billion dollars uh, uh, that that we've set aside. It's about almost ten percent of of a gross domestic product. So that's why we're supporting the economy, supporting everyone. But people must also comply. 
uh, uh, focus on pre prevention measures, but also support themselves. Mm -hmm. They must uh, help themselves so that we can also help them better. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us on this special program in which we're joined by the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Honorable Professor Mtuling Mube, to discuss issues related to the Zimbabwean economy, the state of the country's roads, as well as funding of tertiary institutions. What I got from today was that we need to protect lives and protect livelihoods. As well, if you feel like you need financial help, make sure that you contact your, uh, your social um, security uh, personnel next to you so that they help you to get in touch with the government and then you get help. My name is Tavita Natasha Mbala and this is Great Zimbabwe University Campus Radio. We're parting ways with the song coming in from Paul Matavide. Enjoy this one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very good. 